Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another FNAF News video. And once again, welcome back to another very juicy FNAF News video. We got a whole bunch of updates on merchandise, including a whole hefty ton of news and leaks regarding upcoming Funko FNAF products, and also a very, very big new plot synopsis for the upcoming FNAF movie, as well as a very quick update on that untitled Security Breach animated TV show we talked about in a previous FNAF News video. So if you're excited, don't forget to scroll down, tickle that sub button if you're brand new and also while we're here happy two year anniversary to security breach fury's rage can you believe it has been two years already oh my gosh time just flies by in this fnaf community doesn't it i'd be curious to know just quick what are your thoughts on security breach fury's rage do you have any good memories about the game while we're here celebrating its two year anniversary but now without further ado let's just go ahead hop right into the brand new news first up we have hex revealing one of their upcoming sitting fnaf plushies they took to twitter today saying first reveal of the FNAF Hex Wave 1, magnetless plushies we wanted to show is Chica. And as you can see, an absolutely adorable plushie, very fuzzy as well. She does, of course, have all of her details with the bib, with the cupcake. The other day, Hex revealed a bit more detail about these sitting plushies that I forgot to mention, saying that they will have no bags or cords for the sitting plushies, but that special sitting plushies in the future will have them. That is just a very quick update on Hex's upcoming sitting FNAF plushies. I'd assume they're going to be revealing the rest of them in the near future, so stay tuned for that. Moving on now to Funko Products, we got our first look at their upcoming Blackheart Bonnie figure exclusive to Walmart. In my opinion, he looks absolutely fantastic, almost identical to what the skin looks like in FNAF Arrow Special Delivery. The only thing I'm confused by is what is going on with his teeth inside of his mouth? Why are they so sharp? If you don't know the skin, Blackheart Bonnie does not have like these nightmare-like teeth at all. He's just got one row of stubby teeth on his bottom jaw, so why they decided to go with this route? I have no freaking clue. Not too long ago, we did also get a look at the Walmart exclusive Blackheart Bonnie plushie, so it looks like all of his merchandise is releasing pretty soon, if not right now. Moving on to some more Funko news, we got Scarlet Joker, aka Tony Mario Bros, leaking a few more upcoming FNAF products. First up, they revealed the entire wave of Funko's upcoming FNAF Biddy Pop line. And if you don't know what Biddy Pops are, they're basically just really, really, really tiny pop figures. They come in packs of four, as you can see from this Harry Potter wave, and the fourth figure is actually a mystery mystery character. And for FNAF Wave, as you can see, pack 1 will feature Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie, Balloon Boy, and a mystery character. Pack 2 has Foxy, Chica, the Cupcake, and a mystery character. Pack 3, Nightmare Bonnie, Nightmare Freddy, Nightmare Chica, and a mystery character. Pack 4, Sister Location Themed has Ballora, Baby, Funtime Foxy, and a mystery character. And the options for the mystery characters is Nightmare Foxy with a 1 out of 3 chance, Funtime Freddy with also a 1 out of 3 chance. And then lastly, we got Springtrap and the Nightmare Cupcake, both with a 1 out of 6 chance. So I'm not sure when these Biddy Pops are releasing, but since we do know every single character in the line, I would hope they come out pretty soon. But that is not where Tony Mario Bros stopped, because went on to update his list of upcoming FNAF products from Funko. So let's go through it quickly. Starting off with action figures, we have Sun and Moon, who we did know about. Moving on now to the holiday wave, we got Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. And then a brand new retail exclusive figure for Nutcracker Foxy. Blackheart Bonnie, we knew about him. We saw his reveal earlier on in the video. The 13 and a half inch Golden Freddy figure we're still waiting on. Next up, surprisingly, we have a Glamrock Freddy Builder figure. And we do already have a traditional Glamrock Freddy figure he released around uh, 2020 I believe. Wasn't really the best quality at the time, didn't look like Glamrock Freddy when Security Breach came out, so maybe this is Funko's way of giving us a more updated design for Glamrock Freddy. Now I'm not sure if this build a figure is going to be with the Holiday Wave, or maybe there's going to be a new Security Breach action figure wave with Sun and Moon and a few other characters. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see, but moving on to brand new statues, we have Freddy and Bonnie who we did know about. As for pop figures, we do have the four upcoming holiday versions of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Biddy Pop 4-pack, we did just go over that. Then we have a Funko Soda with Foxy and a Chase variant. 2023 Advent Calendar, we also knew about that. Most likely is going to have the holiday characters. Moving on now to plushies, we have Sun and Moon, as well as 16-inch versions of the Sun and Moon plushies. Holiday characters again, Nutcracker Foxy as well, once again a retail exclusive. Then we have three 16-inch plushies of Candy the Cat, Tie-Dye Funtime Foxy, as well as the brand new Santa Freddy. So just like Nutcracker Foxy, seems like the Santa Freddy is another retail 
exclusive during the holiday wave. Interesting he's not getting an action figure though, just a plushie. Brand new reversible head plushies for the tie-dye characters of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy are coming up. And lastly, we have the common release of Freddy and Bonnie hand puppets. And now we've got an update on that untitled mysterious security breach project that showed up on IMDb page. The project claimed to be an animated TV series starring the Glamrock animatronics being voiced by their original voice actors. And a couple days ago, this project was added to the resume for the voice actress who voices uh, Roxanne, Gregory, and Vanny in Security Breach. And now because of its addition to her personal resume, Marta actually took to Twitter to reveal this whole thing was just fake, saying this is not a thing. It was added in error and I'm trying to get it removed from IMDb as well. So as it turns out, there is no animated Security Breach show to look forward to, which is pretty disappointing. And it does make you wonder if a Security Breach TV update is actually on its way, because if you remember, this show was one of our pieces of evidence that we used to claim a new update and new Freddy and Friends on Tour season was coming with a brand new release of Security Breach TV. And now the show was fake, those dates in April that the site was supposed to update on came and went with no news, and so that does kind of make me doubt we're going to be getting an SBTV update in the near future, which really sucks, because I was looking forward to it. Alright, well now let's just go ahead, let's focus on the FNAF movie news to end out today's video. Because fellow YouTuber 3C Films, who does a lot of videos talking about various movies, I highly recommend his channel, he's an absolutely amazing guy. Well today, he put out a video saying Five Nights at Freddy's movie in-depth plot found, new details revealed. And basically, in the video, he was able to find, with the help of a few other people, a brand new plot synopsis for the upcoming Blumhouse movie. Well, this plot and brand new details were found in a movie survey, something studios uh, released to the public to try and get their overall consensus on whether or not they'd see a movie along these lines. And so without further ado, let me just go through the plot. It's not too, too long, and it does have some pretty interesting details that we definitely got to talk about. From producer Jason Blum, and based on the acclaimed video game series of the same name, in this supernatural horror film, Mike Schmidt, played by Josh Hutcherson, is a troubled security guard who starts a seemingly easy overnight gig at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, the local family entertainment center. Struggling to take care of his 10-year-old sister Abby, played by Piper Rubio, on his own, the generally undependable Mike is low on options when he lands this new job to pay the bills, and brings her along to the gig. Mike quickly realizes, however, that the night shift at Freddy's won't be as kickback as he was thinking after he makes a disturbing discovery. That the pizza places for horrifying animatronic mascots all apparently come alive, moving about on their own as they hunt down and attempt to kill anyone that is still at Freddy's after midnight. Now, Mike and Abby must do everything they can to keep themselves alive through the night, but after local police officer Vanessa Monroe, played by Elizabeth Lale, arrives and quickly finds herself thrust into the middle of this terrifying situation, she is able to shed light on the dark history and inner workings of Fazbear Entertainment and its nefarious co-founder, William Afton, played by Matthew Lillard, a man who it turns out is a child murderer, with their ghosts now haunting the animatronic creatures. And now, Mike, Abby, and Vanessa must find a way to all work together if they are to have any chance at surviving this increasingly deadly night, with animatronic characters by the Jim Henson's Creature Shop. So that is the brand new plot synopsis and some very interesting details that we gotta talk about. The first thing that stuck out to me is that Abby, it looks like, is going to be at the pizzeria when all this stuff is going down. Because it says Mike brings her along to the gig and now her, Mike, and Vanessa have to fight through the night. I was not expecting Abby to be there, a very interesting twist on the generic FNAF gameplay where there's usually only one character surviving the night, and then we got Vanessa who was gonna help out with Mike and we were like, okay, some dynamic duo stuff going on here, but now Poor Abby, you know, like it says, this 10-year-old tiny little girl is also trapped there. And I guess that does kind of further explain why we saw Abby and Freddy outside the establishment in that uh, teaser we got. Originally, I just thought that was promotional material, but now maybe that could actually be a shot in the movie. Another thing we find out is that Vanessa's last name is Monroe, and it doesn't begin with an A, much like Security Breach Vanessa. So it seems like Scott's doing the traditional act of having a already existing FNAF character's name being used with a completely different different character. I still just can't help but going back to what Abby's connection is going to be during this whole debacle. Again, I don't think anyone was expecting Abby to be there during the night when all this is going down. Now I'm spitballing here, but earlier I did see a pretty interesting theory from Enton that Abby has a much more prominent role in this film than we were thinking, possibly having some connection to the animatronics, to the dead kids, to the pizzeria and its hauntedness. Uh, and I mean, based off this new plot synopsis, 
that could likely come true as she has a much, much more major role than any of us were thinking. Another discussion I've seen going around with this brand new plot synopsis is whether or not Michael and William are related in this movie adaptation. Because we know in the games they absolutely are, but I'm curious to know, maybe Vanessa's trying to explain, oh yeah, you know, this William Afton guy, he, he went around, he killed all these kids, and now they're possessing the animatronics, attacking you. Is there going to be a moment where Mike's like, dude, that's my dad, that's crazy. Or maybe he's not going to know William at all. And he's going to be just like, whoa, that's crazy. I don't know that guy though. I think that's one of the more confusing aspects of this film is the trend with relationships. Are Mike and William related? Are Abby and Freddie working together? Like, are, is Freddie nice to Abby? Much like Glamrock Freddie is to Gregory. Does Abby have connections to the dead kids? Does Vanessa know William personally? It's very interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Another thing I'd like to bring up is, is this still happening after the place is closed down? Because there is a lot of evidence for that look at all the vines and the metal gate on the facade of the building freddy looks a bit worn down in that teaser with the missing ear we did have an alleged leak that says yeah it all happens after the place is closed down the only time we see it intact and the animatronics intact is in flashbacks but also at the same time like if i'm mike i'm not taking my 10 year old little sister to some dark creepy abandoned building during the night time and that's another thing i'd love to know your thoughts on i am very very intrigued by this brand new plot synopsis and its brand new details Another thing we have to consider is whether or not they actually spend five nights at Freddy's. I don't think they will, just because, I mean, realistically, I know it was kind of always a joke when the first game came out, like, why would you want to spend five nights at Freddy's? I'm hope- <laughs> I'm hoping at least Mike would realize, I gotta get myself out of here, I gotta get my sister out of here. If anything, I'd assume it's gonna be maximum like two or three nights, like maybe night one's a setup, you know, not much goes on, maybe a few creepy things, but Mike still has to go back because he's gotta pay those bills. Or if it does just take place on one night, I'd assume for a couple hours, pretty relaxing again, but then it starts to pick up as the night goes on. But I do think once they realize, oh shoot, bad stuff's happening. We should get the heck out of here. I don't think they're actually going to spend five nights at Freddy's, and yes, I'm going to keep doing that joke. And also, if you're craving more theories and speculation with this brand new plot synopsis, I'm going to leave Chris's video in the description. Well, that is going to do it for this FNAF news video. Once again, tell me all your thoughts and theories on the movie in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on all the brand new Funko products and leaks? That's going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.